So my name is Zilad, and I know we have been holding you back from the big party uh, this evening. So we'll uh, get over with this session, and so that you can, you guys can enjoy. But we have a lot of exciting things for you. So we'll talk about the Dynamic CRM and how do we do all the integration within Dynamic CRM, and a lot of great things that Satya talked about relationship intelligence. So we are going to talk about a little bit about relationship intelligence but you'll hear more about it in the, in, the, in the coming weeks. So let me start with uh, first, uh, what, what are we going to talk about today? So first I want to give you a, uh, an overview of productivity in general, what we have done so far from whether it's SharePoint integration, Outlook, Exchange, and so on. And Ilad, my colleague over here, is going to focus more on the CRM app for Outlook. So we already have a CRM app for Outlook, which is an office app that we built last year. And uh, he's going to talk a little bit more about that, the V2 of that app, uh, and how we are making enhancements into that app to make it more contextual, uh, to get parity with some of the uh, things that we had with the Outlook client, uh, add in the com add in that we have today. And then of course, we'll talk a little bit about the relationship insights uh, or relationship intelligence. Uh, and then kind of uh, talk about the overall roadmap. The roadmap essentially is going to be about the CRM app for Outlook, server-side sync, and the relationship insights uh, going forward, really. So even though I kind of focus on sales productivity in this uh, deck, think about all the things that we do from an uh, office integration, productivity integration perspective. It applies to even custom entities. It is very generic across sales, service, uh, uh, customer service, and marketing, but of course, it works for custom entities that you have built on our XRM platform as well. So when you think about sales productivity, first think about the research that has gone by, that has been done by CEB. Uh, what they have looked at, all the, the sales reps and the sales managers, they have had some research done on that, and what they have found is that the sales reps spend a lot of time actually with their customers and they have a lot of stakeholders. There is a lot of complexity throughout the process that they are, they are dealing with. They have been taking a lot of big burden when you think about uh, the kind of things that they have to deal with, with from a customer complexity perspective, whether it's the number of stakeholders that they are working with, if there are customer functions that they are working on, or if there is a product complexity. As you know, there is, the solutions are becoming more and more complex. You bring so many co components together uh, and of course, uh, sometimes you're you are doing customizations, configurations, and whatnot. So that makes it very complex for sellers to kind of comprehend all this, bring it all together, and present it to their uh, customers. Uh, of course, there is an internal complexity also. So there is uh, the sales cycles can be long. There is an internal approval process that is also uh, required in some cases when there are larger deals involved in that process. Uh, with larger enterprise uh, size deals, often you are you have to work with a sales team. Within your organization itself, you are working with a several set of people uh, to close a deal. So how do we, how do we make this, the task much more easier? So they are essentially going through this business process, uh, what we call closing a deal. So if, a, if closing a deal is the primary purpose for a salesperson, they are going, through, going to go through this business process for closing a deal, whether it's starting from qualifying a lead all the way to closing the, closing the deal. Uh, and it, of course, involves like making a call, uh, first tracking incoming email for a lead, uh, taking notes when they are talking to their contacts or stakeholders. Uh, they are actually doing collaboration with, with their internal team members. Uh, they may have collaboration tools like Yammer and O365 groups. They may be actually creating proposals during the development propose stage where they are actually using Word and PowerPoint and all the uh, great office tools. So when you look at it, there are so many office touch points during this process. And that is where we really focus on. How do we make actually their life easier so that they can use, leverage all these office productivity tools that we, uh, that we already have and keep on making their investments, our investments really, and drive those investments into the product. How do we bring, how do we light up our scenarios using those investments? And of course, at the end, of course, they want to look at their pipeline and use Excel to do pipeline analysis and whatnot. Uh, so the, the way that we, when we think about this integration is really we want to make it immersive so that they don't have to often, they often have to switch apps. 
So as much as possible, we are trying to build an immersive kind of experience within CRM itself. So they have, they maintain the context as well as they have that immersive experience. And one of the examples that we, I often give is the immersive Excel experience that we built uh, last year, where we actually brought Excel grid within CRM itself for the opportunities, and you can do any kind of what if analysis uh, through that process. Also, of course, all the internal collaboration, we have O365 groups integration. Uh, and the other thing that we, we focus on is from a perspective of our customers, we first focus on bringing all these new capabilities on cloud and of course to our mobile devices also. So we want to build all this into the mobile app. So you will see a lot more investments going into cloud as well as uh, uh, mobile. But at the same time, having said that, you will also see these investments going into our hybrid scenarios. And of course, for our on-prem customers, those eventually will come into the on-prem, CRM on-premises as well. So let's take a quick tour of, uh, uh, I'll show you a demo of, uh, for our mobile app, how you can actually do document management. I'll give you a flavor of this. We want to focus on as much as possible on CRM app for Outlook. Uh, so let me switch over here. So what I have is the, it's, it's our uh, mobile app. And uh, uh, I, let me go back to the, actually the home. So I'm on the home uh, dashboard. And then I'm actually looking at, I have a pin tile for particular opportunity. So I'm going to open that opportunity. And as I open the opportunity, what you can do is, first of all, you will notice that there is the whole opportunity summary and all the information is there on this. Uh, as part of our mobile app. And you will notice that we have OneNote also integration over here. So you cannot create a OneNote from here through the web client, you can create a OneNote, but any visibility from a read perspective you can get actually through your mobile app. So as salespersons are traveling, they want to actually have access to all these notes and they can use phone or, or, or tablet devices to get access to this, these OneNotes. So I can, and it is directly connected, so you can open the OneNote from here and you can see that it is actually showing the, the, the notes that, uh, that the salesperson took as part of the engagement or as part of the discussion that he had with the customer. You can always go back, you can save all your notes, you can go back and it will be saved within, uh, within CRM and it will show up in the mobile app. Now let me actually show you uh, the, uh, uh, the experience with uh, what we have with the document management. As part of the business process you saw that they are taking notes but they are also doing collaboration. But before I go into collaboration, I want to show you scenarios around document management and how do you kind of create your quotes and proposals and how do you actually store them within SharePoint and, and so on. So what you have is, if I go back to, the, uh, to this particular opportunity again, you will see that there is a document tile that is uh, pinned to the, uh, to the summary. So on the, on the left side, when I click on the documents, what you're going to see is uh, all the documents that are stored within SharePoint. And what we did actually last year in the last release is to bring all the different types of documents that exist. So for example, what, when you think about document management, it's not just about sharing your files with the rest of the team members. It's also about private files that you don't want to necessarily share with others. So we have actually integration with OneDrive for Business. So what you see over here is different document locations over here. So there is a file that is stored on OneDrive. So you may not want to sh uh, uh, share your one of the files that you have for a quote or proposal with your, uh, uh, with your team members. Uh, you may, it may be in a draft state, or you may not want to share it broadly with the, with the sales team. Uh, so you have files that are coming from a private perspective. So there are private documents. There are public documents from which are stored in SharePoint. And of course, we, what the other thing that we have done is we have also documents which are stored in O365 groups. And I'll show you that experience a little bit later. So we have this entire spectrum of documents that are stored from public documents to private documents, and of course, the ones that are, sh that are controlled through membership through the O365 groups. And those also show, uh, uh, show up over here. And as part of the uh, code or proposal, you may want to actually share those documents. So you can always go back to the one, OneDrive for Business app and you can share that document, and once that is shared also, we, whatever is shared with me, shared with you, it's also going to show up. So the, the, last, uh, the second last file that you see, see over there, the draft proposal has been shared with me. 
So it was created by somebody else, but they shared it with me, so I am able to actually see those. So you have that entire uh, spectrum of the documents that are stored if, uh, for that particular opportunity showing up over there. Uh, there are document recommendations that you notice. I'm going to talk about a little bit later about how do we actually bring more, make, make, make it a more intelligent cloud with all these kind of scenarios where we are talking about insights as well as document recommendation kind of scenarios. The other thing that we can do with, uh, let me actually go back to the, uh, to the opportunity again and uh, show you some of the scenarios around what our document generation that we did uh, again, in the last uh, couple of releases, what we did is, what we saw, the, the pain point really was about actually uh, having a particular document and they have to take that data and put it into Word or PowerPoint in the rich client. So instead of that, we thought that it will be great if we can actually take CRM data and do a server-side document generation. And that's what we do with actually uh, this particular scenario of Word templates. So we already had uh, uh, the Word add-in that actually does this process, but it was not a server-side operation. So what we do now is we, you define the similar template, really, and then we use this word template, and we, you can create an opportunity summary. So opportunity summary is a template that has been created, and I'm just actually going to use that template and create an opportunity summary based on the content CRM data, which is already there in the opportunity. So you can see that uh, I created, and if you had a quote, then you will see the quote also being brought in into the, into the opportunity. Uh, so this is really about everything about from starting with uh, taking notes, uh, doing collaboration, then uh, uh, creating a document, whether it's a code or proposal, st storing it in SharePoint, sharing with your customers, and then, of course, uh, uh, the doing pipeline analysis. So in the end, the, the end user is really going to do pipeline analysis. So, so the salesperson, what he does is he looks at the opportunities. So let's go back to the opportunities. Uh, so he has a set of open opportunities that he, he's work, he or she is working with. And what you want to do is, uh, we already had uh, export to Excel. So you could export the, the data from Excel, you can import data uh, into Excel, of course. What we did is, in the mobile app, what you can do is, you can actually do now uh, uh, export to Excel, very similar to the server-side document generation that we did with Word, we do, we do the same thing with Excel where we bring, use the Excel templates, and there is a pipeline analysis template that has been already predefined, and, uh, uh, and then you just click on that, and you will see that there is a, uh, uh, there is a pipeline summary uh, document that gets generated in Excel with the pipeline uh, analysis scenario with all the charts and graphs that you can see actually using Excel. So this is a way to kind of, uh, uh, for you to do, use power of Excel uh, to do all your what-if analysis, you can actually make changes to the data over here and then save it back as well. Uh, of course, there are other ways that you can do this within CRM, so I'll show you later on in the, in the web client as well, where you can actually, we have something called an immersive Excel experience where you can actually do inline edit of the, of the data for your opportunities and save it back to CRM. So let me now switch back. So we have very long history of our Outlook integration. It started with the COM add-in, as I mentioned, in the very first release, or 1.2 release of uh, CRM. And we continue to invest into that. Of course, our focus has shifted to now server-side sync. We used to have Outlook synchronization, which still exists, of course, with Outlook client. Uh, but you can also use server-side sync with our Outlook client add-in. But the focus is, again, going to be on the Outlook, uh, on the server-side sync and the new CRM app for Outlook. And Ilad will talk more about that. So I'm going, not going to spend a lot of time. But what I want to emphasize is that it covers the entire spectrum. Just like what we are doing with document management, it is really about like uh, uh, tracking all customer and prospect communication. And whether it is done through automated tools, writing automated rules using folder level tracking that we have, or there are rules that you can define within CRM itself, and you can use those rules to, uh, to sync your data. And it's a bi-directional synchronization between CRM and Exchange, so you uh, use sync filters to move data from CRM to Exchange, as well as move data from Exchange to CRM using uh, manual tracking or even automated tracking. So it's an entire spectrum, again, uh, from a tracking and a synchronization perspective that we have within, 
uh, within CRM. I already talked about one node integration. I want to again re-emphasize the point that I made earlier that all our integrations work with custom entities. So if you define custom entities, you will be able to kind of configure and enable this for uh, custom entities as well. Uh, and of course, it's a side-by-side -side experience, so you can actually launch the OneNote app and actually uh, start taking notes and then save it back within uh, CRM. And you can leverage all the rich features that, uh, that OneNote has. So if you have contact or uh, uh, if you want to actually take a picture, all those things can be saved and, and pushed back to CRM and it is connected to, uh, to the CRM record. The next is the Excel, the what if analysis that we have done with Excel. Uh, and uh, I want to show you actually the immersive experience uh, over here, but I'll show it to you later when I show you the O365 groups demo. Uh, what we do is, over here is we use the, the existing SharePoint technology that works with the WAX server. We use the same technology to bring the data back, render the document, and bring that back into the CRM uh, as an iframe, basically. So what you see within CRM is an Excel document uh, for the grid, basically for the opportunities, and you will be able to kind of uh, do everything within that Excel and save it back to CRM. Uh, and now we have Excel template support also, so you can use personal or organizational templates. Uh, Excel is available on mobile, so you can actually export the data from uh, mobile devices as well. Uh, so you can do all kinds of analysis. Of course, we have Power BI reports also for sales and customer service now that have been published. So you will be able to, so the salespeople can use those uh, Power BI dashboards as well. And it is embedded within CRM, so you can actually have that within CRM. The other thing that I mentioned earlier was the document generation using Word. Uh, the only thing I think over here is uh, we have support for mobile again uh, for this particular scenario as well. So you can actually do this uh, server-side document generation on mobile and actually you will be able to see the data uh, within the Word document as a quote or a proposal. Now let's switch back to the collaborative selling. So one aspect is the tracking and, uh, tracking and synchronization of customer and prospect communication. But the other very critical aspect for, from a CRM perspective is really any kind of collaboration, whether it's a team collaboration, whether for internal or external, whether it's customer collaboration, or it is communities collaboration. So what we focus on is to kind of bring all those things together, and we are going to invest more and more into that kind of a unified experience going forward. And O365 groups is to some extent an effort in that direction that Office started with the unification story across SharePoint, Exchange, and even Yammer is going to come on that platform. So you will see all those things, including Outlook conversations that are going on in, into one place. Uh, and I'll show you a demo of that. But essentially, what you have over here from a collaborative selling perspective is anything related to document management in terms of SharePoint document library, in terms of OneDrive for business, uh, in terms of uh, having that on mobile. Uh, we have uh, information discovery through Dell. So we brought actually trending documents that you see in Dell today. You, we brought it on the, on the CRM platform as well. So you are able to see actually trending documents uh, which your, uh, your uh, team members or colleagues may be working on. And then I think finally, the, it's really about the office groups integration. But uh, one thing is the unification across SharePoint, Exchange, Yammer, and Outlook conversations. But the second important piece that is often missed is the guest access scenario. So it can actually enable external access also. So if you have an ex external customer that you want to share with this, or even a partner, for example. Uh, and you want to kind of give them access. The other scenario which is very critical, in my opinion, is the uh, internal team members, but they're not part of your sales team. So they don't necessarily have access to CRM, but they want to kind of uh, get access to all the communication collaboration that is happening for a particular deal or opportunity. And what we did is, for, because with that scenario, you actually define all your membership within O365 groups, or your sales team members actually become part of the O365 group, but you can define additional members. For example, your product team may be interested in actually understanding, or you may be collaborating with those uh, members, and you want to bring, make them as part of your O365 group so that they can, you can collaborate with them. So let me actually, and we did some more work on the group connectors also. There are 60 odd connectors that are available on the, on the groups app, uh, and CRM is uh, one of them, so you can actually do any kind of a, 
uh, uh, updates that you do within CRM, they, are, they get pushed to the groups connector uh, as well. So let me show you a demo of this office groups integration that we have today. Right now it is available on, uh, uh, on the uh, web client, but uh, uh, of course through the groups connector, it, uh, some of the updates also go to the, the mobile app. So what I'm showing you here is an opportunity, which is a different opportunity. So the process is that for this particular opportunity, it's a very big deal. So you are working with a sales team, for example. And you have many sales team members that you are working with. So for example, you have these different members within, the, uh, within your organization that are part of that sales team. And you want to work with them uh, to kind of do collaboration. And then, of course, uh, you want to see everything in one place. So we enable this experience, so let me actually show you by going back to the opportunities. So you see a list of open opportunities that the, the salesperson has, and I'm going to open that particular opportunity over here, uh, which is the 3D printers, uh, and, uh, and you can see you can do collaboration through over here also within the web client. Uh, you have Yammer over here, you have OneNote, uh, you have other set of activities that, uh, that you get feed for and, and so on. But I'm going to open the uh, O365 groups page, and this brings all the things that are related to O365 group, uh, essentially that the uh, conversations that are going on, the calendar information, or the meetings that you have within the team, uh, anything related to OneNote, anything related to your SharePoint documents that you share with the team, and, and so on. Uh, just takes a minute to kind of, uh, it does a sort of uh, uh, authentication and then you will see all the data related to those, uh, uh, all the unified feed that you get essentially, where you see calendar on the left, your conversations that are going on. One thing I want to highlight is this is all connected to the, to the, to the app, uh, to the O365 groups. And you will see that there are certain things that you did on the, uh, let me open it over here in, uh, in O365 groups. Uh, so you will see all the things that you did, conversations that you did, even the groups connector app that we have, what I did is actually I posted certain things or, or whenever the ch changes happen in the business process from a stage perspective, uh, all those uh, changes can be pushed back to the, through the groups connector app uh, to, the, uh, to the groups. And then you will see those things, those updates within the group conversations as well. So everything related to files and calendar and everything is right over here. And any external team members, which are still part of your company, but they are, they are collab collaborating with you, they'll be able to access the, the data and then, of course, uh, will be able to collaborate with you. So that's uh, uh, O365 groups integration that we have. Let me actually show you the immersive Excel while, I, while we are here. Uh, so let me go back to the... to the set of opportunities that I had. And you can see over here, export to Excel. Uh, if you are a CRM online customer, we have this experience of opening Excel online, which opens the immersive Excel experience for you. So if you're doing a pipeline analysis, you can do the pipeline analysis right over here, uh, what if analysis. Of course, you can use the Excel templates that I uh, showed you earlier but you can actually do changes over here right within, within CRM and then save the data back to, uh, save changes back to CRM. So that's the experience that you will get with uh, overall with the, the productivity integration that we have. So let me now switch back So now, what are the new features that are coming? And I gave you a hint about those things, and Satya uh, talked about intelligent cloud. So our focus is going to be more and more around how do we get insights, really, going forward. 
and I have a great slide to kind of show how it has changed in the last 20, 30 years uh, that, uh, that focus on shifting from engagement to insights and, and whatnot. So one of the things that we did uh, in, uh, in our uh, spring release was around document recommendations. So this feature already kind of exists in a preview environment, and we are updating it further uh, by bringing it to the web client as well. I'll show you that uh, the demo of the document recommendations on the, on the, our, in our mobile app. So what we do in document recommendations is really we look at similarity between different entity records. So we look at uh, similarity that you have with a particular opportunity with the rest of the opportunities that already exist, whether it's account information, product information, industry information, geo information. If it is captured in any of the attributes, then you can define similarity rules. And using those similarity rules, actually, you can bring in the data from other opportunities or the documents from other opportunities. Uh, as recommendations for this particular opportunity. And you will be able to eventually, uh, with the fall release, you'll be able to copy those uh, documents over. So if you're working on a proposal and if you want to see if there was a corresponding co proposal that was done for, a, for, for that particular account before, you want to take a look at that particular uh, uh, proposal document, you can certainly bring that over. So let me show you a quick demo of that. Again, I need to go back to the... So I'm going to open that, uh, the opportunity that I had before. Let me go back to the home page. Uh, actually, let me select a different uh, opportunity. So I have this 3D printers opportunity, and I'll uh, go back to that suggestions. First, I need to open the document style. I'll see the, the documents that already exist today. There's some problem over here, but uh, if you look at this uh, show suggestions, uh, you will be able to see all these document recommendations. So essentially what it is looking at is, it's looking at the similarity rules that have been defined, and based on the similarity rules, it is bringing all the documents uh, uh, from other opportunities, for example, or from even accounts. And then, of course, then you can uh, bring those documents over and make it part of your, and you can make changes for your quotes and proposal that you're looking for for that particular opportunity. So that's the kind of experience that we have for document recommendations. So with that, I think uh, that's the uh, overall kind of a productivity overview. Now, Ilad is going to focus uh, on the CRM app for Outlook and server-side sync, and he will tell you the whole story around that and uh, what are the kind of enhancements that we have done in that uh, area. So while he's bringing up the, for document recommendations, the configuration is fairly simple. Uh, it's you define similarity rules. If you have used uh, the machine learning based uh, things that we did in for, uh, based on text analytics, uh, it was done or for case recommendations and product recommendations. It's the similar setup that we have uh, for document recommendations as well. So you define those similarity rules, and once you define those similarity rules, you can use those rules uh, to get the document recommendations. Thanks, Madan. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Elad, and I'm a program manager of the Office Productivity Team. As Madan said, I'm going to talk in the next few minutes about how we integrate CRM app for Outlook within your inbox. So basically, we know that today, Outlook is the main application that runs in the background. And rather than send our customers back and forth to CRM, we want to bring as much information as we can to Outlook. So, today we have few methods of syncing, exchange, and CRM, right? We have either Outlook Sync or server-side sync. And also, in terms of client, we have the Outlook add-in, 
We have folder level tracking, and we also have the Dynamics 365 app for Outlook. Going forward, we decided to focus on the server side sync and on Dynamics 365 app for Outlook. So these are the main two uh, mechanisms. One is the backend, the other one is the client uh, oriented in order to allow our customers to track the activities. Now, in the last spring release, we uh, completed the integration of CRM on-premise with Exchange Online. And by doing so, we actually cover all the four different cases of CRM on-premise, CRM Online, to Exchange On-premise, Exchange Online. And now, okay, so this is the four different way that, ways that we have today to do the tracking, activities tracking. We either have the Outlook add-in, which is the full add-in that gives you some additional capabilities in addition to tracking activities. We have the server side sync, but this is the rule-based tracking, right? So this is something that runs in the back end. You don't have to worry about that. The emails and other activities will be synced. We have the folder level tracking, and this is basically drag and drop emails to a specific folders within your Outlook or any other client, and then the email will be tracked. And finally, we have Dynamics 365 out for Outlook, right? So we are on transition of calling it Dynamics 365 or Dynamics CRM, so you see those two terms here uh, during the presentation. Okay, now let's have a look of what we did or what we are going to uh, uh, show you in the next release. Uh, what I'm going to show you is a uh, better build, right? I wanted to show you the, the, the newest feature that I, can, uh, that I can have. So some glitches are still expected, but most of it's working. So, no. uh -huh. Bear with me just one, mi one more minute. Uh, okay, thanks. So, thanks, madam. I'm a sales manager, and my name is Paul, and now I'm getting an email from Ali asking to have a call with IT next week. Before replying back, I want to see some background information, what I know about Ali. So I will open Dynamics 365 app. As you can see, now the app is on the side, and you can access it through these buttons. Now, for those of you who attended uh, yesterday's uh, session of the Outlook Extensibility team, they've mentioned that starting the next, the next release, which is I think in about a month or so, you will be also able to pin the app into the uh, side thing. So, hmm, interesting, doesn't look very nice in here. So, you will be able to keep this CRM pane on the side while going between one email and another. And just the context will be changed. So let's have a look of what we see here, right? So. This is Ali, I got the email from Ali. I see that there are some, there is basic information. I can see my next and last activity with her. Also, I can see the recent cases and recent opportunities. And I can see this information regarding every one of the email recipient. For example, Sarah. So exactly the same information. Now, let's say I want to track this email and I want to link it to existing record within CRM. All I have to do is find this record, 
for example, we'll be ordering 11 items and click on that. And that's it. Email track regarding is set. And you can also see the summary here on top of the email. Um, I'm not, not very happy with the way it appears on the screen. It's even worse, no? Any better? In a way, okay. So that's the set regarding and tracking. Also, that's uh, supported in custom entities. So any custom entities that you have that you can set the regarding against will appear here, and you can set the regarding to that email. Now, assuming that you didn't find the regarding object in here, what you can do, you can have a look at your CRM pinned and most recently used record. Okay, so this is exactly the same list as you have in CRM. And we believe that 80%, up to 80% of the cases of set regarding will end up here, right? Because either you have the context of this recipient or these are the most common records that you work with. If not, you can always search for a record and choose from here. Or you can also create new. And again, you can create can choose from built-in entities or custom entities. Now, not only we show you contacts and leads in CRM, what if one of the email recipients is um, my colleague in my company, right? So this is Thomas, and I have some kind of indication that Thomas is not a new contact or unknown contact to CRM, this is a user, CRM user, okay? We also show you if the email will be sent to DL, distribution list, we also highlight it here. And finally, if this uh, contact is unknown and outside my company, you always have the option to add the contact to CRM. So that's the first, the first demo. Additional button that I'm missing here? Seven. Okay. Thanks. So let's talk about the setup, right? So we have the end user that used that, but how about the setup? So luckily, we simplify that as well. So within CRM, if I'm the user, I can easily install the app, right, from here. The app is already installed, so I don't need to do anything. But if it wasn't, I can click here, and the app will be installed. But as an administrator, I can install it for all of the user all together. And the way I do that is by going to the app settings, and you will see here that I see all the eligible users. So all the users that the app can be installed will appear here. And also, I can choose to install the app for future users. So any user that will be added, that I will provision, will get the app installed in his or her Outlook. So that's one less task that me as administrator need to do while provisioning new users. Finally, you saw the structure of the app, right? So here. And also we had the recent cases and recent opportunities. So the recent cases and recent opportunities are basically the same list as we have in the contact list. So if you add recent records on the sidebar, oh, looks really, really bad, then they will be added in the app as well. And if you change the summary of the record, 
then the regarding summary will be changed accordingly, right? This thing. So that's about the setup. Let's talk a minute about compose emails. So let's assume I want to answer this email or I want to compose a new email, for example, to Sarah. So first of all, I can track this email and see exactly the same information as I see in receive email. But you see on the top, there are some action that I can take. I can add templates, I can add knowledge articles, or I can add sales literature. So let's assume that I want to add templates, okay? So what are templates? CRM templates are, is feature that already exists in CRM, right? Where you can take some information from the record and embed it within the email. This is a relatively simple example, but I also highly complicated example when you put a lot of information from the record, okay? So here, I just choose the contact reconnect, I add that to the email, and that's it. Everything is populated, the name of the contact is populated, my name is populated there, and we have the same thing with knowledge, man knowledge management articles. You simply select that and it will be added to the email, and sales literature, which are basically files that you can add to the email, okay? So, you have the option to see the information of compose email, track this email, set the regarding, and add templates or knowledge-based articles or sales literature. What about appointment? We also support that. So starting the fall release, you will be able to track appointment from CRM app for Outlook. No more Outlook add-in. Right? You have that installed, ready. Now, that's a good time actually to talk a bit about how we sync appointment from CRM to Outlook back and forth. So from Outlook to CRM, we do that through manual tracking. You have to click a button, right? You have to click on the track, and the email will be created within CRM. The other way is automated. And I will show you in a minute how this is done. But as soon as appointment created, either in Outlook or in CRM, those two instances of the same appointment are in sync. So if you if you'll change something in this appointment, it will change in the other appointment, right? So if I'm changing the date or the time of the appointment in my Outlook, it will be changed in CRM. If we change the regarding object of this appointment in CRM, it will be reflected on my Outlook. And also, all the appointment that created through CRM on my Outlook will appear as track and the regarding is set. And the way today that we sync appointment from CRM to Outlook is through what we call the sync filters. So these are basically a set of filters that each user or system administrator, or both, can create with certain rules. For example, if I'm the owner of this specific contact, I want to see all the appointments on my calendar. If this, these are appointments are on my team, I want to see them. If the regarding object is a certain object, I want to see those. Right? There is a set of rules that you can choose, and there is a large number of rules that you can create. And as I said, as soon as the appointments are in sync, change in one instance of the appointment will affect the other. If two different fields were changed, the sync will happen in those two fields. And if the same field change between the sync cycle, then the latest change will take effect. So these, are really, these appointments are really in sync all the time. And now, let me finish by going mobile. So this is Outlook App. 
right? And within the Outlook app, you see that there is this small button of the add-in. And when I click on that, I will get Dynamics 365 data. Okay, so the same information now on my Outlook, my Outlook app. And again, I can go and I can see Sarah, information about Sarah. And now I decide that I want to track this email regarding need three printers. That's it. Email is tracked regarding is set. On the go, on your mobile. Thank you. How many of you use the Outlook mobile? Great. Also, what you are going to see start in the fall release is a link to Mocha, to the mobile CRM app. So basically, if you see opportunity here and you want to click and see more detail, just click on that and our mobile app will be open, right? Or you can go back to your inbox, continue do, and, and do what, whatever you do, right? And we have all the capabilities that I just show you we, in Outlook, we have it here. For example, if I want to choose from search or pin, or most recently use, everything is here, okay? So here it is, the mobile. Also, we invest some time on improvements, improving server-side sync. So, as I mentioned, we plan to go ahead with server-side sync. We need to make sure that it supports the full scenarios of our customers. So, first of all, the first pain point that we are aware of is the fact that Office 365 admin need to approve CRM users' mailboxes. We make it easier and if the mailbox, if the email address was not changed comparing to the provisioning, then this mailbox is what we call pre-approved. Okay, so just CRM admin can test and enable the mailbox, that's it. The mailbox is ready for you, okay? Also, we try to improve the UI so you can see the real state of the mailbox. We have the server side sync dashboard, but also within the mailbox, you can see a better status and better notification, including in the alert world. We plan to make the test and enable much faster. Also, if a user or someone which needs approval and is not administrator want to approve the mailbox, they will see a clear message saying, hey, this mailbox needs approval, and they can click on a button and easily send an email to the administrator, right? So rather than try to see who CRM, who, sorry, who Office 365 administrator is, what exactly do you need to ask from him or her? The email is ready for you. Just open it, click, send it over. And finally, we simplify the alert wall to reflect the current status of the mailbox. So today, there is a lot of noise in the alert uh, wall of the mailbox. We are going to filter this out and you will see just the relevant alert for this moment, right? Not the history of 10 hours ago if there was an intermediate connection error with exchange, but what's happening right now. So, to summarize, in the common fall release, we improve the performance of the app. You saw that right now, right? We make it much easier to track and set the regarding. We support in CRM app for Outlook, all the four different configuration of CRM and Exchange. We also support Compose mode. I didn't show you, but you will be able to create activities, appointment or task within the, uh, the app itself. Um, support on mobile, I didn't mention that, but we also support Mac, okay? Outlook for Mac. Easy set regarding, choose from pinned and most recently used and recipient's resolution. And as Madan mentioned before, going forward, we plan to be more and more intelligent and use the uh, relationship intelligence. So going forward, we are going to show you 
intelligent cards that relate to the email. The template, for example, we have something that's called uh, template suggestion. So rather than choose a template, we will suggest you template based on the popularity of the template, the, the reply rate, et cetera, et cetera. And we are going to invest more and more time, more and more effort on that in the next coming releases. And by doing that, I will hand over to Madan. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. So I think as Elad mentioned, our investments are going in the direction of CRM app for Outlook and server-side sync. And it's a lightweight client with a lot of benefits. So if your end user base is really interested in uh, just doing tracking and set regarding and getting contextual insights, then that is where you, need, you, want, to be, you want them to be. Because it's a lightweight client, there is zero footprint for, for the client devices, there is no maintenance required, there are a lot of benefits. It uses server-side sync pipe instead of the client-side sync that Outlook client goes through. So there are so many benefits with the, it is available on different browsers because uh, you can use OWA, you can use Outlook mobile, of course, you can use Outlook for Mac, you, you can use Outlook desktop. So there are a lot of options that are available with this and it's, it's a manifest that you actually do, you, uh, put it into the Exchange server, and that's, that's about it. After that, the app is available to all the end users that, uh, that, that are interested in. So let me now switch back and talk a little bit about the, uh, the history. So when you think about uh, the old client-server model, in that uh, when, you think, when you thought about uh, uh, business apps, it was always about a system of record. You wanted to actually gather all the information, really. And it was true for CRM as well. It was not just about ERP. It was the same thing over here where, where you had to capture all the data within, uh, uh, within, within your system. As, you, as we shifted to the web mobile kind of uh, uh, decade, uh, it was really about system of engagement. So you wanted to improve your engagement with your customers, uh, make it more effective. But really, if you want to make it more effective, what you really need is the, your end users need is really that those insights or intelligence that you need on the engagement. So it's not about actually just whether you are actually engaged with your customers, whether your customers are also engaged with you or not. And that's going to be the kind of the focus going forward. And data is really, as my actually manager says, it's really the, the engine or the, it's, it's really the oil of the new economy. And that's, what, that, that's where we are going, where we want to actually harvest this data we look at this data and figure out from different sources that are available within uh, Microsoft itself, all the technologies and the tools that we have, and how we can leverage that to bring those insights, not just via look at CRM data, but br uh, bring all the data from Exchange and how do we make use of the data to show the insights. So essentially, it is really about all these communication products that we have, whether it's SharePoint, and I told you about the document recommendations, but of course, Exchange, Skype for Business, and whatnot, and how do we bring all that information and kind of do data mining, but along with CRM. So we need to have the CRM context as well to bring those insights to CRM. So the first thing that when we think about it, first is really about auto data capture. How can I bring all that exchange information? Even though we provide so many tools, we have like server-side sync, Outlook sync, we have CRM app for Outlook, often uh, end users don't land up using doing tracking. And they don't show up, even though those are related to CRM, they don't land up uh, uh, as being activities within CRM. So we want to do some kind of auto data capture. And to some extent, server-side sync with some automated rules actually allow you to do that. But we want to actually bring that experience within CRM itself. So what we did is we wrote actually a pipe to, to uh, exchange and brought those exchange emails within CRM itself. So, and if those are untracked, you can actually go to the web client itself and start tracking those emails within, within CRM web client itself. And in that process, you don't even have to switch to Outlook or any of the other tools. It, you can do it within CRM, bring all that exchange data, and then start tracking those emails. The second thing, uh, one of the other things that uh, you want to stay on top of your relationships, basically, and uncover new ones. But how do you do that? There is something called relationship analytics. So you want to see how many kind of uh, uh, emails that you have sent to your customers, uh, how, how many emails your uh, team has sent to uh, your customers, and so on. So all those KPIs or the data that exist, you want to kind of create some uh, uh, 
BI around it and bring that over and kind of create relationship health for that data. So that's the second kind of a theme that we have under relationship insights. The third thing is what Satya showed uh, at the keynote, which is relationship insights. And to some extent, we started with that journey with our, fall, with, with our spring release, where we brought some of these insights from CRM itself and from Exchange, actually. So we actually look at some of the Exchange data. We look at the do, do some text analytics. Uh, and it is done all in Exchange. But then we bring over those insights from Exchange into CRM and show that within the context of an opportunity, for example. So for example, if, you have, if the end user missed a particular, uh, uh, they missed to send a file to the customer, and the fi file was requested by the customer, or if they uh, missed an, uh, a meeting with the customer. Uh, and we bring all those insights, uh, and some of the more relevant insights from a CRM perspective. So for, for example, if opportunity is at risk, so we want to look at the relationship analytics also, and how can we harvest that information and, and, and kind of uh, merge it with CRM to figure out if the deal is closing sooner. And we want to kind of look at the relationship health and the, the end user is not, or the, or the sales team itself is not actually uh, working with the customer. Uh, we want to bring all that information and, and, and show it to the end user that your opportunity may be at risk. So all those insights that we can bring from either text analytics or any of the other things that we have in the relationship insights and show them as a relationship assistant with the, to, the, to the end user. And the four, fourth and last, not, the, not but the list, is really what are the different trends that are relevant to your business, basically. So all the trends related to uh, whether it is uh, related to external information from Bing uh, that you may be missing. So you want to bring all that information within CRM and show them as insights. So just to summarize what we are trying to do over here is uh, described over here with those four themes. First is the auto capture, bringing all those uh, exchange emails and uh, doing auto tracking, uh, email engagement, where it's more about, not about your engagement with the customer, but how your customer is engaged, because that's really will tell you whether the customer is uh, willing to purchase from you or not, or is more inclined to purchase from you. So that's the email engagement part where we can actually do open, uh, whether the customer has opened the emails, whether they are uh, opening uh, the links within the email, whether they are opening attachments within the email, where we look at the templates that we have used, whether they have used, uh, they have opened the emails with specific templates, uh, how much is the usage, and those kind of uh, data that we can get, we can look at the, the uh, location or uh, location information for the user or the time zone information and figure out what is the right time to send uh, when they open the email, so what is the best time to send the email. So there is a lot of information related to how the customers are interacting with you, and we want to bring that through the email engagement. And then, the, of course, the relationship analytics, uh, which is really the, the BI on top of all the exchange information that exists with CRM, and eventually will bring all the interactions uh, which are there within CRM or any other systems uh, related to CRM uh, activities, really. And then, of course, what you see on the, the bottom is a bubble chart, which is really, uh, it's a bubble chart which shows uh, the opportunity pipeline, essentially, uh, with x-axis being the days to close and the y-axis being the relationship health. So we define a relationship health based on all these KPIs that you have, number of emails that you have sent or your team has sent with different slicing by different dimensions, by me, by my team, by from a customer perspective, what is the response rate? We look at all the uh, KPIs with which are coming from email engagement, and then bring all those things in a, in a formula called uh, relationship health. And of course, the, the, this formula is an empirical formula, and we'll keep on improving it based on machine learning and some of the learning that we do based on the feedback from you guys and whatnot. But also, it is also the, the most important thing is the trend within that uh, uh, relationship health. So where is the trend? And we want to actually show it within the context of business process going forward. So this is kind of the roadmap that we have to kind of invest more and more in all these four different themes. Uh, and not just stop at emails. Uh, we want to bring like appointments. We want to bring in uh, uh, data from Skype for Business, the calls that you have made. And all those that information can be useful for tracking within CRM. And then finally, of course, the relationship assistant. So let me actually show you a little bit about some of these things. Uh, I al already mentioned about uh, uh, the email, so you can bring all the emails. And what you see in the, on, the, on the middle in the activity wall is just like the Yammer and the system post and activities, 
You can also get these emails right within that activity wall, and you can start then tracking those emails. So you see that if the email has been tracked or not, and you can start tracking those emails right within your CRM web client. The second scenario that I talked about is all about email engagement. And it is available on the mobile as well as, of course, on the web client. You can actually do any kind of statistics related to that email on, on, on your mobile device in, uh, in terms of how many clicks were done, uh, how many uh, uh, clicks were done for the links or attachments, uh, how many times they were opened, and how many times the email itself was opened, and, and whatnot. And you can get it on the email form, email activity as well as within the context of an opportunity, as well as uh, uh, on the mobile devices. Talked about uh, best time to send. So we can track the location or IP information and the time zone information, and we'll keep on improving upon this also in, uh, in future releases uh, to figure out what is the best time to send, and if you want to do a delayed send. So you don't want to send the mail if you're writing an email on Friday, but you know that they're more likely to read it on, uh, on, uh, on Monday morning, 10 o'clock, or, or whatever is the right time from their perspective. Then you want to send it later. So you can actually do a delayed send within CRM and schedule it, and it will be eventually available on the CRM app for Outlook as well. So all this email engagement data will be available in fall release, but eventually uh, in future releases, all this delayed send and best time to send kind of scenarios will be available on CRM app for Outlook, because that's most likely the surface that uh, the end users will be using. Some more information around email reminders that I, so you can have reminders and generate insights based on that. Uh, some of the things uh, that I talked about, relationship assistance, and you will hear more about this in, uh, in the next two weeks, uh, where you will see a carousel over there actually of, uh, on, on your dashboard where you get all the insights. The insights are from different sources. So there are certain set of insights which we call productivity insights, which are coming from like external data sources like Bing. There are so, uh, uh, insights which are coming from exchange data mining. So looking at the body of the email and trying to figure out whether there's a new lead or a stakeholder that is mentioned or there is a competitor that is mentioned and whatnot. So all those kind of scenarios which are very CRM centric also will come as part of the insights within this. Of course, it will show up on the activity wall itself within the opportunity, so you can see all these insights. This is already available as a preview right now, and we are going to go ahead with a public preview uh, with our fall release. And of course, it's, uh, there, we, what we are building is something called a landing page, and you may have uh, seen this with, with our mobile app. That landing page will actually bring some of those insights and along with those ins insights that you will see actually uh, things like uh, anything related to meeting preparation. Because you want to know about the agenda for today and how you want to kind of plan for your day uh, from an end user perspective. So all those kind of things that, uh, that you will get on the landing page, essentially the, those are all signals coming from CRM, email engagement, external data sources, email text mining or text extraction that we are doing. Uh, you can do snooze dismiss for this, uh, both in web client as well as uh, on the mobile client. Uh, there are scenarios around the, the top records that you want to focus on within this landing page. So there are a bunch of things if you want to kind of, uh, if you're planning to have a meeting around a proposal, all the related information related to that proposal will also show up as part of that, uh, that insight. So you, uh, all the attendee list, of course, you will be able to see. But at the same time, the most important part is the CRM contextual information that you are looking for for, for that meeting. So there are 20 plus uh, cards that are going to be available. Uh, there are more cards that will be available with our uh, when we go do general availability in, uh, in our spring release. Uh, and of course, they are going to be more focused on exchange information exchange, data mining, and, and so on. And uh, things like opportunity at risk, uh, uh, which will be the, the kind of key scenarios that we'll bring as, uh, as, a, as part of the relationship assistance feature. I want to give you a, a sneak peek at that. Let me see how much time I have. I don't have a lot of time. Um, so let me see if I can actually show you.
And this is already available uh, today. So what you see over here is the, in the, on the dashboard, um, and it's a, a live environment that we have actually, that we have been working on. Unfortunately, it shows only uh, the CRM cards right now based on the tasks that are due and whatnot. So if you click on this assistant over here, you will see all these uh, different cards that are uh, uh, based on the tasks that are due for today. Uh, and you want to kind of, uh, and, and one of the key things over here is, these are all actionable insights. So we have actually actions, inline actions over there, so it helps you to kind of take actions corresponding to those insights as well. So you can see all these insights uh, over here, and then uh, you, can, you will see uh, a carousal kind of a view for all those insights within uh, here. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot show you something for the opportunity, but what you will see over here is essentially all insights that are coming from productivity perspective, uh, whether it's Bing News, Exchange Insight based on text analytics, all the other areas like uh, email engagement, and those also generate uh, insights. Uh, of course, CRM data generate their own insights based on the task and activities that are defined, and so on. So that's kind of a overall kind of, a, and this is the roadmap going forward where we'll keep on investing more and more into, uh, into essentially uh, this relationship insights. Uh, more around auto capture, uh, as I mentioned about Skype for business uh, data, uh, meetings data, uh, we'll have more information around relationship in, uh, analytics. We want to figure out what is, who is most contacted and most contacted by uh, from your uh, uh, organization so that you can add certain people as stakeholders if, they, if those are not part of your stakeholder list or if some of those uh, people who are interacting with your uh, external stakeholders for your account but they may not be actually part of your sales team, you want to add those as your sales team members so all that uh, insights that you can get out of this uh, will be pushed as insights as well uh, into uh, CRM. And then, of course, we'll have more cards, uh, more insights based on uh, the rest of the, the uh, information within CRM and Exchange. So that's kind of a, really what we have uh, from a, so that's the overview that we had. What is new is really CRM app for Outlook, uh, relationship insights that we'll keep on kind of investing in. Of course, we'll invest into server-side sync also to make it more, even more reliable, uh, make it even more scalable. So we have like a scale which is fairly limited right now, but we want to go to a scale where it is like really big enterprise customers can actually leverage this in our CRM online system, uh, and so on. So that's uh, any questions. Uh, we have Mike over here. If you have any Q and A, uh, if you don't mind coming over here and. Uh, that will be uh, great. Ask a question? Sure, yeah. Um, are there any plans with the Outlook add-in to give access to documents, related documents? Sorry, say, can you repeat that again? Are Outlook add-in means uh, the current com add-in you're talking about? Yes, are there uh, any plans to give access to documents? So if I send an email, I set regarding, can I then access things like the proposal to send out? Proposal to send uh, through the Outlook add-in itself. Yeah, exactly. So we already have access, uh, some of the things that you saw on the CRM app for Outlook, those are already available. Actually, we are trying to bring parity so that whatever you can do from a sales literature perspective and those kind of things, which are already available in the Outlook add-in. So if you have a proposal that you want to send, you should be able to send it and set regarding for that particular email. So you already get that data within CRM. But say, saving um, uh, a document from a customer coming in, set regarding, can I save that attachment to the, the site attached to the Office 365 group? Oh, you are, so if I understand correctly, are you asking whether the document, uh, if you receive an email with an attachment, and you want to save that attachment into SharePoint or anything, any site that has been defined as part of your document management story? Yep. That's a very good question. Uh, we do have plans around it, but right now it's uh, still in our backlog. We are trying to figure out how do we bring that information into SharePoint instead of going into CRM online. So today it goes into CRM online. Hi. Hi. Other than hard coding the uh, 
were secure on all my replies using the Outlook or on-prem email activity? So Outlook, if you are using Outlook client add-in, it's whatever is through the Outlook client itself. Uh, uh, there should be a secured way of actually securing that. Uh, do you mean encrypted in, uh, in some sense? So any kind of encryption technology that is available with Exchange or uh, that's the way to kind of uh, go about doing it. But if you are saying from CRM web client the, and you are using server side sync pipe, right now we don't have any plans to support any kind of encryption technology. It, uh, we haven't kind of uh, verified or tested whether it works with any encryption technology. But we'll take that feedback and figure out whether, uh, are there any specific encryption tools that you are interested in? I've been talking to the Voltage guys. Uh, that's the only hat I got right now because I searched the internet, nothing as such. Right. And then writing uh, encryption, uh, .NET code, and then the other side also, I have to decrypt it, which was not an easy way. Right. Because right. all of our customers right now are, they, if, I, if I do the hard coding of the secure, goes to the uh, Office 365, it works, but then they have to log in every time to get the one-time password, which, is, which could be cumbersome. Okay. We'll definitely look into that uh, from a tool perspective, how, what we can support from a server-side sync uh, uh, perspective. And also the attachments that go in with the emails have to be encrypted. Sometimes we have that requirement when we send PHI, Otherwise, there's no point having the uh, outgoing profile activated in CRM. It doesn't, I mean, it, it, other than sending plain text, it really doesn't help. Right. So I think we'll look into some of the uh, work that Exchange team has been doing on, uh, on this, uh, and we'll figure out whether there is a way for us to uh, leverage those investments and use that for our, with our server-side sync. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question about extensibility. Sure. Custom entities. So most of these things work, except I think CRM app for Outlook, where right now it is limited only to the Colac entities, what we call Colac entities, uh, uh, account and uh, contact and uh, uh, all those four or five entities that we support, uh, case and uh, uh, opportunity. But uh, beyond that, we certainly actually with the uh, with the spring release, we are looking into how we can support custom entities as well. But rest of the, all the other integrations work with custom entities. That is the, even the O365 groups integration that we have, you can define custom entities and they will show up within the configuration experience for O365 groups. And you can say that I want to kind of uh, uh, create a new group for this particular entity. In fact, we use the same framework for our PSA solution that we build. Uh, it uses the same kind of uh, approach where projects can be as part of the O365 group as well. Is there a way to extend the relationship advisor and potentially adjust the algorithm for um, recommendation? Can you repeat that again? Do you have a, a, a way of providing recommendations based upon similarity? Document recommendations, you mean? Document recommendations, is that extensible? That's a good question. I need to kind of uh, go back to my team and figure out Right now, it is available on uh, definitely case and opportunity kind of entities. Uh, as long as it is supported by the similarity rules, uh, I think we'll have to, we should be able to support that. Uh, but I don't think there is, there should be a configuration for custom entities as well, but I'll have to kind of uh, go back to my team and verify that again. And then any plans for flow integrations from? Um... Microsoft flow, you mean? Yeah. Uh, that question is really for our workflows team, so because they work with like business process workflows and uh, all those kind of dialogues and whatnot, uh, so that's more appropriate for that team, really. So the, uh, the number one reason uh, the customers and staff and everyone that I know uses Outlook as the primary mechanism of uh, email and appointments is because in those appointments, you can't create a Skype for Business meeting on the CRM side of the coin. So everyone does it in Outlook because that's just the, every meeting is a Skype for Business meeting. We know that the Skype team is turning on uh, always meeting functionality so that even if I don't click the button, it's gonna actually have a meeting in it. When that's enabled, will that allow 
folks who to use CRM as their primary you know, mechanism, whether it's the, the, the Mocha client or the WebView, to actually send appointments out. Because that's, that's the one reason everyone doesn't use that is because they want to get a meeting link and a bridge link automatically into it. So anything related to Skype for business from a meet now kind of perspective or any, uh, anything related to, uh, we definitely are looking for those kind of scenarios from a more immersive kind of experience for Skype for business. Uh, not just like a conferencing a meet now kind of scenarios. So we're, right now, uh, it's again, it's in our backlog, but uh, it's not planned for our fall, fall or the spring release, at least. Thanks. But we'll take that feedback. Uh, absolutely, that makes sense. You have shown us that there is new capabilities to see statistics, for mostly data from exchange. Um, my question is, are you looking into also feeding the graph maybe to get the CRM information with the relationships between emails and meetings from the graph? And when you uh, say graph, meaning office graph? Yes, exactly. Uh, so we have been working with the office graph team for the trending documents. Uh, so we did actually the uh, integration for that. Uh, and we continue to kind of invest our time to figure out how does that integration help us not just for this particular scenario, for even document recommendations, for example. Right now, our document recommendations is purely based on the, the Azure search and the search capabilities that we have built uh, and the similarity rules. But we, of course, want to actually go inside a document also and not just like look at, look at the, the similarity with other opportunities. So there are a lot of things that we kind of are looking at. And Office Graph is definitely one of the areas where we can look for uh, anything related to insights or uh, recommendations. Uh, though I think the progress has been kind of a little bit uh, uh, on the slower side so far. So that's the reason why we started kind of a looking at alternative approaches. Uh, but definitely Office Graph is uh, definitely going to be one of the mechanisms where we'll invest and figure out how do we make use of that for insights.